DC motors find applications right from small household items to a large industry equipment. Though they are replaced by three-phase induction motors in most of the applications, it is essential to know how DC motors work because it is one of the most basic concepts on which all the types of motors are built. We saw how DC machine works as a generator in our previous video. In this video, we look at the DC machine working as a motor. The construction of the motor is similar to the generator. The fundamental difference between the two is, in the generator, it produces the current, but in the motors, we need to supply the current. So, let us dive in and learn more about it. The DC motor works on the principle which says, whenever a current carrying conductor is kept in a magnetic field, it experiences a mechanical force. So, we use this principle in motors and make it convert the electrical energy to mechanical energy. To understand why this happens, let us take a single long conductor. We will place this conductor in a magnetic field. Nothing happens in this condition because the current is not flowing through the conductor. Let us connect a conductor to a battery. Now we have current in the conductor which is placed in a magnetic field. Every current carrying conductor will have a magnetic field around it. The direction of this magnetic field can be clockwise or anti-clockwise. We can get to know that direction using right hand thumb rule. In our conductor, let's say the current is flowing from point A to B. According to the right hand thumb rule, we should point the thumb in the direction of the current and then the natural curl of the finger gives the direction of magnetic field. In this case, it will be clockwise. Now, we have two magnetic fields in the system. The first one is the main magnetic field generated by horseshoe magnet and the second the magnetic field due to the current carrying conductor. Now it gets interesting. If you consider two segments of this magnetic field around the conductor that is the upper half and the bottom half we can understand why the conductor experiences a force. The upper half of the magnetic field due to the current carrying conductor will be in the same direction as that of the main magnetic field. That's from right to left. So they support each other and the magnetic field lines will be denser. Similarly in the bottom half, the magnetic field due to the conductor will be in the opposite direction to that of the main magnetic field. So they oppose each other and cancel some of the magnetic lines of force. This means the magnetic field lines will be less in this region. We have a high magnetic field density region and a low magnetic field density region. Because of this, a force will act on the conductor which will move it from a high density region to a low density region. So, the current carrying conductor kept in a magnetic field experiences a mechanical force. Now, if we have a single loop which has two such conductors placed in the magnetic field we'll get a rotational output. The forces will try to twist the loop and we'll have a rotational force. The conductor AB of the loop is now in the zero degree position. It will experience the force upwards. To validate this fact, we have another simple rule. It is called Fleming's left hand rule. Let us recall this rule. It says, stretch your thumb, forefinger and second finger perpendicular to each other. If the forefinger points in the direction of the magnetic field and the second finger in the direction of current flowing through the conductor, then the thumb will give the direction of motion of the conductor. In our case, the magnetic field is from left to right and the current is flowing inwards, that is from point A to B. Therefore, the thumb will point up, which means the conductor AB will move upwards. The same rule applies to conductor CD which is moving down. Now the loop has reached the 90 degree position. At this point the forces acting on the conductors will be along the same line. 
Force on AB will be downwards and force on CD will be upwards. They will be along the same line of action. So they cancel each other and the loop will not move any further. If we had only one conductor loop, the motor would have stopped there. However, in practical motors, we will have many such loops. So, whenever one such conductor is in 90 degree position, some other conductor will be at a different position and we will be experiencing the force. This will make the motor operation smoother. Like this, we will have many loops and we will replace the permanent magnet with electromagnets in the actual DC motor. We also have the commutator attached at the end of the conductors. They make sure that the current flows in the same direction in the conductor loop. Else, the motor action will be alternating. So, commutator helps in maintaining unidirectional torque. The force acting on the conductor which makes it move up or down is given by a simple formula F is equal to BIL where B is the magnetic flux density or the number of magnetic lines of force. I is the current flowing through the conductor and L is the length of the conductor under the magnetic field. If you need to increase the force, increase any one of these. This is all about the working of DC motor. To sum up, we learnt about the current carrying conductor which experiences a mechanical force, torque in single loop conductors, Fleming's left hand rule to know the direction of motion, commutator which maintains unidirectional current and finally the expression for the force. In the next video, we will learn about the characteristics of motors. See you there.